All right, great. Yes, uh, kind reminder again, please switch off your microphones. So, uh, Wayne will be answering the questions during his webinar, but uh, I will briefly start off by introducing iTrain. And uh, yes, so who is the organizing body of this today's webinar? So thank you all again for joining. And uh, yes, so iTrain is supporting digital transformation in Southeast Asia. And we are the pioneers and leaders in tech learning. And at iTrain, we believe in two core principles, the power of technology to shape the future and help us build a better world. And that love of learning is the source of human ingenuity and well-being. And our goal, which is backed by government and academia, is to fast track Asian businesses with the latest technology applications and know-how. And these are some of the certifications that iTrain has at the moment. We have mobile development, blockchain, data science, that includes uh, Python programming and also R programming. We have Internet of Things uh, courses, artificial intelligence courses that includes machine learning and deep learning certifications. We also have things like digital marketing and cybersecurity. And all these, uh, most of the courses can be HRD claimable as well. So, and these have been some of the clients that we've worked with prior to this. And so we've helped empower businesses across many strategic sectors, as you can see, either from finance, technology, industry, and manufacturing. So, yes, thank you for the attention towards me. And uh, yes, we strongly believe that teaching the future is our major goal. So thank you. And I give the floor back to Wayne. Thank you. Thank you, Lise. Um, okay, just give me a moment so that I can share my screen. So first of all, I'd like to just um, share, uh, I'd just like to share with you, like, how do you actually mute your microphone and also turn off your camera? Because I noticed some of you here, you actually have your camera on, but you're trying to turn it off with just your finger. So it doesn't work that way. So what you can do is that, um, like, this is your video, okay? So under video, you should be able to see there are two buttons over there. So uh, there is a turn off camera button and also there is another uh, turn off microphone button. So do make sure uh, both of these buttons, they are, are actually in red color so that uh, it means it's actually turned off, okay? So, okay, let me just switch my screen. All right. Once again, um, thank you very much for joining our session today um, regarding online learning strategies with G Suite for Education. So um, I noticed um, in the registration list, there are a lot of you actually uh, do not have the experiences with um, G Suite for Education, and also, um, and also, like some of you here, uh, you have been actually using it for quite some time. So, which is all right. So, um, I believe you, all of you here, you joined the session for a purpose, basically, because right now during this uh, the MCO period, everybody is basically working from home, and obviously, we are not able to go to the university to teach and students are not able to learn in the university campus. So, um, which is why we have to start to think of a way for us to kind of like start um, 
online learning right so and some of you here um you might be already familiar with um like the ways of actually teaching online or some of you here might have just started like in the past two weeks and you are here to learn some of the tips and tricks um, on how to actually use certain tools so it's all right so let's take this session as um a sharing session for everybody. So let's say while I'm sharing, if you guys have any idea or any question you'd like to share with the others or share with me, please feel free to go to the right side of your screen where you can see there's a little chat button there. You can just click on it and um, type in your questions or idea and share with the other people. And and if you want to interact with other people, please feel free to do so as long as um, you're not using your microphone to actually talk, okay? Um, so um, the CEO of um, Google actually mentioned that technology alone would not improve education, but it can be a powerful part of the solution. So uh, which we have to agree on this. So let's say if you take technology itself, it's pretty hard for us to actually uh, use it as something, okay, uh, to be like fully for education. But, okay, let's say if we actually combine it together with something that we teach, like a subject, okay, or um, some lessons, some lesson plan that you already have in your university, such as like, let's say today, you're teaching digital marketing so you have the content and during the mco period you are not able to deliver it to your students face to face so here is the time when technology started to actually join in to actually join in to become part of a solution and and automatically your content will actually become even more powerful because you have the combination of your uh, solution, your content, education, and also the technology, which is why we have education technology for uh, these days, okay? And our aim for Google for Education, we, are, we aim to actually help educators to make a um, greater impact, okay? Because we do understand a lot of you here, um, you have really good content for your students. So you work really hard to design your lesson plan to make sure that they are uh, good enough, okay, they are interesting enough for you to engage your student. But of course, uh, because we've all the technologies out there, uh, we need to be more creative. We need to be, uh, we need to have like certain thing, a more powerful tool for us to enhance the learning process, so which is why we are introducing G Suite for Education for you. So basically, what is G Suite for Education? Or we call it as the whole suite of uh, Google for Education. So Google for Education basically it gives you more freedom, okay, to spend more time personalizing your learning experience and less time to manage it. Okay, because with all the sharing tools, with all the uh, collaboration tools that we have, it allows your student to basically collaborate, okay, communicate more effectively and also uh, basically trigger out their creativity when they are learning. Because um, if you are doing like traditional learning, like uh, what we are going to talk about later on, so it's pretty limited. So I remember back then, like, over a decade okay before when i was still in the university so we did not actually have such a powerful tool for us to use in a university so when we were having collaboration work when we were having group discussion all we had to do is to basically um, talk to the phone to each other and then we have to arrange for a time for physical meeting and we will use pen and paper to to basically note down our ideas, okay? And which can be really painful when it comes to like certain times such as like this MCO period, we are not able to meet up with each other. So, um, and communication basically, they are being limited at some point of time, okay? So how can G Suite for Education to support 
online learning. Okay, this is basically what we're going to talk about today. So before we talk about that, let's look at what are the tools, okay, that's actually under G Suite for um, Education that's available for you to use it in university and also to utilize it, okay, uh, during this period of MCO. Just for your information, G Suite for Education is basically free for educators, okay? It's free for institutions, it's free for uh, lecturers, professors, even students. Okay, as long as your university is actually using um, Google Domain, basically you will be able to use it for free without any limitation. So first of all, we're gonna look at the first group of tools. It's for collaboration. It's for collaboration, okay? So um, we have first the most, one of the most important key to that we call it as Google Docs. So for those of, you, those of you here who have not used G Suite for Education before, for information, Google Docs is basically a document platform that allows you to, um, to note down, okay, your information or even allow your student to do assignment. It's a document, okay, document platform, such as uh, what people usually usually use, such as like Microsoft uh, Word, okay? And second, second one, we have Google Sheets over here. So basically, it's a spreadsheet for analyzing, visualizing, and, and also charting the data. And then we have Google Forms, which uh, it's a digital form that allows you to collect your data. And we have Google Slides, which uh, it's what I'm currently using now. It's the presentation uh, platform that allows you to create your slides and share with other people. So, um, and we'll be looking into it in more detail later on. Okay, and we have Google Drawings, um, which allow you to create some simple graphics, flowchart uh, with shapes, text, and images for you to share with the other people. All right, and then um, we sum it all up. We have one Google Drive, which is your cloud storage platform. So basically allows you to store um, all of the tools, all of the platforms that we mentioned above, Google Docs, Sheets, Forms, Slides, Drawing into your Google Drive and share with other people. And um, the most interesting part is that it allows you to actually access to it anytime, anywhere, as long as you have a computer, you have your phone, and you have internet connection, okay? And the next thing we're going to look at is basically a group of tools which help you to increase your student engagement, okay? I, I understand this is rather important for everybody, um, especially when you are lecturers in the university. Like, uh, this is one of the key things that you always want to do. You want to make sure that uh, you are part of your students' conversation when it comes to your class, okay? You want to actually have some engagement with them. You want to have some interaction. So those are the tools that you can use. Uh, the, first, the first thing is Gmail. So we all, we all here use Gmail, right? So um, it's basically for emails, for you to contact with other people, for you to actually have your communication. And then we have Google Calendar, which allows you to schedule some appointments and also a, for basically for time management, okay? And we have Google Hangouts, which is the platform that you're currently using now for conferencing call, for online learning, for online meeting, all right? And now we have Google Sites, which is um, a web page creation platform for you to publish some information, for you to create a very, very quick website within three to five minutes. Yes, it's within three to five minutes, okay? To share all the information with your students or even to allow your student to basically share information uh, for their group assignment, all right? And here comes, we have Google Groups, uh, which is for group communication for web forum. And of course, we have Google Classroom, which I noticed a lot of you here, uh, you have been using it, okay? So let's see if we have any question from you guys. Okay, is Google Hangouts same with Google Meet? Um, basically, Google Hangouts is the older version of Google Meet. So, um, 
right now, Google is actually planning to eliminate uh, Google Hangouts pretty soon. Okay, uh, so which is why we have this new product, which is the enhanced version of uh, Google Hangouts. So we call it as Google Meet. So uh, as soon as uh, Google Hangouts is being eliminated, it and uh, Google Meet will be the only tools for video conferencing. Okay. Great. All right. So let's take a look something that we're going to discuss today. Um, so for the topic today, we're going to talk about fast, facilitate group work in the classroom. Okay, and before that, we're going to look at how traditional group work or assignment uh, works, okay, in real life. So here, I have actually grouped it into two different categories. So one is the traditional group work that um, we have very minimum digital to involve. And the other part is basically group work with G Suite for Education. So let's look at your left hand side on the screen. Okay. The traditional group work, we have like uh, like every person they have different copies of documents. So in this case, let's talk about like assignment. So when we um, assign like a group assignment to the students, um, so let's say we combine them into four in a group. So very often, um, students will actually have different copies of document for the different copies of work. And then they combine it together at the end when they have all the ideas to create a master copy, okay? But often we have an issue that happens. So which documents are often being duplicated. Okay, when someone actually collected all the ideas and um, he actually he or she actually created uh, a document and think that is a master master copy, but the other person in a group actually create the other copy, which is like it could be totally like different version of um, the other the other ones. Okay, so this could be the issue, and distance discussions um, are often done through group chat. Okay, I'm pretty sure every one of you, you are very familiar with this part. Like we like, we love to create a WhatsApp group chat and then we just put in all the information. We wanna make sure everybody get the ideas. But let's say if you have a group chat that is more than four people, normally, you know, you have everything going on there and it's very, very challenging for you to track back the information that you actually discuss about, like let's say yesterday, and you have like over 200 messages and today you have over 500. So when you want to track back, it's really uh, challenging. And often we have misunderstanding and miscommunication within the group chat because um, the information, the ideas are not being well noted. Okay, that could be part of the issue. And then we have like, Ideas and information are gathered from different, from multiple sources. So such as like, uh, we have some people, they go on YouTube to get uh, some information, some of that, they just Google it, they get from different websites, okay? And when they want to track back the references, it could be really challenging because I believe um, as a lecturers, as a university, you guys would actually need your student to include, okay, the references least for the information that they have gathered for their assignment to be part of a work right so usually we want to make sure um, the information that they get the research that they have done they have done is actually uh, from the legit site okay so i got a question here from one of our friends so since google hangout is updated into google meet is it still free yes it's still free okay Okay, let's get back to uh, the group work and assignment. So we have already discussed about traditional group work and assignment. Okay, and is there any one of you you would like to share your experience with your students when it comes to group assignment? Like, let's talk about what sort of issues do you normally have? Do you normally face when it comes to group assignment for your student? So it could be like the submission of the assignment. It could be the information. What are the issues that you normally face in the university? 
only one student will be doing the work. Okay, I like that. Yes. Okay, I, I always hear this thing and I'll be showing you how could you actually track who are the people that are actually doing the work, okay? Make sure everyone contributed, lack of collaboration. So, okay, seems like everybody is having the same issue, okay? Like uh, most of the time, only one student, they are actually doing the work and the others, they just like join as a group and submit the work and then they get a score. So not to worry about that, okay? A lot of copy and paste work from the internet. Um, last minute work and have no quality. Okay, great. It's really good to hear your issues and today we are here to help you, all right? I'll show you how could you actually solve all this thing. After this session, okay, you will learn how do you actually overcome all that. Okay, let's look at the right-hand side of my screen. So group work with G Suite for Education, right? Um, oh, okay, so okay. basically, <laughs> oh, when you're you, using G you. Suite for Education, individuals are contributing ideas on a single Google Keep note. For example, if you want to have a discussion, okay, um, you want to just jot down all your ideas, you can use Google Keep. All right, Google Keep is basically one of the notepad app that is available for you. It's free for you and you get to access it from different devices and different platforms, okay? And you get to trans you get transform your Google Keep note straight into Google Docs, okay? And yes, basically you convert your note into Google Docs, not copy and paste, but you just have to hit a button and you'll be transformed into your Google Docs. So this is the interesting part and I'll show you how. And uh, with G Suite for Education, discussion can be done through Google Hangouts Meet, okay? And individuals, they can actually present the screen with um, the present screen feature with Google Slides. All right, so right now I'm actually using my Google Slides to present my screen to you, as you can see. So basically there is no limitation, okay? There is no limitation and there is no um, like such a thing like uh, when students, they actually go home, they cannot actually discuss face-to-face, -face, okay? They can still get it done through Google Hangouts. All right, and we have like Google Docs, so research work and the sources of assignment can be cited under the reference list of Google Docs. So basically, all the work, all the research can be done within Google Docs itself, okay? And um, they can straight away put the list, the, the list of references of the link into the Google slide, into the Google Docs, sorry, okay? So now let's take a look on how to do all this thing. Okay, I'm pretty sure like all of you here, you cannot wait to actually see it. So first of all, we're gonna head to um, Google Keep, okay, to show you how does it actually work. So in order for you to go to Google Keep, you can actually type keep.google.com or you can just simply, simply go, to, go into your Gmail and on the top right here, you should be able to see Google Apps button. So you just have to hit on this button and scroll all the way down until you see Keep. Okay, that will be your uh, notepad, the pa platform for Google Keep. Okay, when you click on it, it should actually open another tab for you to assess, okay, to your Google Keep. So while I'm actually showing you, you can actually um, do it like together as well. All right. So when you go into your Google Keep platform, so there are a few things that you can see here. On the left hand side, you get to see notes and reminders and edit labels, okay. Um, archive and trash. So here, so first of all, we're gonna look at notes. So assuming that you're gonna create a note here. So for example, I have a group discussion. I'm just gonna type in title.
Okay, for example, group discussion for digital marketing assignment. So that, that's gonna be my title. And, and of course, I'm gonna start making some notes here, okay? Um, So for example, I have some notes here. And so here are a few things that you can learn from here. So let's say if you'd like to create a reminder for yourself, okay, that um, you need to get this piece of work done. So you, you can basically set a reminder here and it will be attached together with your um, Google Calendar. Okay, this is pretty interesting because um, when it's being attached to your Google Calendar, you get to see, okay, what what time and when, which date that you have to submit this piece of work, for example. And it will actually send you a reminder at that point of time to remind you that you need to get this piece of work done. Okay, let's give it a try. So later today at 8 p.m., so I'm gonna set it a reminder. So once I select it, 8 p.m., okay, you get to see today, 8 p.m., you're gonna get a reminder. And of course, there are more options you can choose. Do you want it to be repeated? Like whether uh, it's gonna be daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, or even custom that you can actually create different type of uh, reminders, okay? But in this case, I'm just gonna select it as does not repeat and just turn it off. And here comes the interesting part. So. When you're using Google Keep, you can actually share it with your group member that you want to collaborate with, okay? That's assuming that I would like to share with uh, one of my group member here. So I just add him into my piece of note. So once I added him into that, he will actually receive an email saying that, hey, uh, Wayne has actually shared this piece of note with you, so let's collaborate. and. Here you get to change the color of your note and you can add picture into your note. Let's say if you have any sort of screenshot. So this can be really useful if you uh, want to attach some screenshot to show it to your uh, group member. Especially when it comes to group assignment, I think this is really useful, okay? And we have the archive button and more, okay? The more buttons here, there are a few interesting things here. So you can you get to add drawing. So which when you hit on drawing, you get to see like a drawing pad here. You can draw something, you know, you can draw something here and add it into the screen. Add it into your note, okay? And you can make a copy, you can show check boxes. Okay, you can even actually make it as your checklist okay let's say if you want to track what are the things that's been done you can actually add in check boxes and once it's done you can just check it so it will show us one completed item and you'll be moved to the bottom okay there's an interesting part that i really love and here comes so we talk about you can copy your note directly to make it become a google docs okay with just button, so here it comes. So when you click on this button here, you will see a message copying to Google Docs. So once it's being copied, you just have to click on open document, okay? And this piece of document, you'll be automatically created and saved in your Google Drive, all right? So it will look almost the same as what you can see in your Google Keep notepad, okay? But uh, what you can do is, basically you just have to do a little bit of formatting work in your Google Doc here. So now, okay, we come into Google Docs. So everything is being saved automatically in your Google Drive. And of course, you can now start to share it with your group member. Would it show who contributed what in Google Keep? Okay, in Google Keep, it will not actually show you uh, like who contributed the ideas, but okay, within Google Docs, you'll be able to track 
feedback who actually contributed the idea. So for example, okay, today, um, so before that, I have to share, before you get to actually track it, who actually contributed the work. So let's assuming that this is the work of your student and this particular student, he or she has to actually share it with other group member. Okay, so how can he actually share it? So you just have to click on share button and put in the email address. Okay, I'm just gonna put it in, like for example, so I'm gonna share with my group member here. So I have two group members and I can actually type in a question. So I, have, I can actually type in note. Right, so I have a note for them. So they'll get notified, okay, when I hit send. So they'll get an email saying that, hey, Wayne has actually shared this piece of document with you. So not right now, I've actually shared it with two people, okay? So people can start to contribute the work here. And right now, as a teacher, so when, as a teacher, as a lecturer, at, when student actually submit a work to you, you will need to track who actually contributed the idea, right? So this is how you track it. You go to file, okay? And you go to version history. So that's the interesting part. So you get to see version history here. And on the right hand side of the screen, you get to see this version, okay? With this piece of work, who contributed the idea? So you get to see the name. All right, so let's say if I have more people contributed some work into here, I get to see more names on the right hand side. And as I click on it, I get to see uh, the ideas being highlighted and who contributed which idea. Okay. So once you're done, you basically just have to hit back and you'll be brought back to the piece of document. So at this point of time, do you guys have any more question? So let's see. Okay, no more question. So let's keep going, okay? And there are a few more things that is really useful for you to actually use within Google Docs. So for example, so this feature over here, in normal mode, so you'll be actually set as editing mode. So let's say if your group member uh, allows you to actually do editing, to add more ideas into it, you'll be in editing mode, okay? And when you click on this button, it will show different permission here. So let's say if you like to suggest something to your group member, okay, instead of adding your idea straight away into a document, you want to suggest so that people can think about it, your group member can discuss, can think about it before they add your idea into this piece of document, you can actually switch your mood, your current mood to suggesting. So, and once you hit on it, okay, you will see when you type something, you will actually see like a green box, a, a green bracket, okay, around the information that you have typed into your Google Doc. So for example, um, so let's type something. So as you can see, I've actually switched my mood to, to suggesting, okay, I would like to suggest this idea to my group member. And when I type in my idea, automatically it will show there is a green bracket around whatever that I've just typed in. So my group member 
they will see this thing on the right hand side when they open up the document and of course when i'm typing in my suggestion they'll be receiving an email saying that wayne has actually suggested some idea so when they open up this piece of document they get to see okay wayne suggests add this part into the document so they can either add a command thing that okay i think it could be Be better okay let's see and i can actually as a group member i can reply okay to win saying that hey um, i think your idea could be better or i can just hit accept suggestion so so look over here when i hit on accept suggestion it will be automatically added into the document okay so let's say today my group members they disagree with my idea so they can actually reject the suggestion so when they hit on it it will be automatically removed okay can we have an example to have a few people contributed to check who contributed what for sure Okay, in this case, I would actually need uh, this. I would actually need your help to go into this piece of document. Can just give me some ideas so I can share it to um, to our our attendees here. Like, how does it actually show? Okay, within my version history. Okay, so while waiting for Elizabeth to actually um, give me some. Ideas, ideas in my document, uh, I will just answer some other question here. So, so Liz, um, I've just shared this piece of document with you. Can you just go to your email and open SS and just type in any things? Okay, uh, how to avoid things being accidental? accidentally deleted or if someone accidentally did, can we retreat back? Okay, that's a very good question. So let's say, okay, today, uh, Liz actually accidentally deleted my um, idea. So can I retrieve it back? Of course you can, okay? Either um, like anyone that is, that, that's having access to this piece of document, they'll be able to retrieve back. So the same thing, okay? Right now I can see Liz has actually added hello okay to my document so that's least idea here so i'll just go I'll, I'll just go into version history and see version history so right now okay i get to see this version there are two people contribute to the idea so i can actually open up and i just click on different name so when i click on this version um, at 239 by Wayne, okay, Wayne only contributed this so far. So when I click on Liz version, which is the late, latest version, I get to see Liz in purple color, actually she has contributed hello, okay? And okay, now let's say if I like to go back to the previous version, how do I do it? So because uh, all the version, whether it's being deleted or it's being added some new ideas, it will be saved here under version history. So if you'd like to retrieve, ba retrieve back, so this is what you can do, okay? You click on this version, you click on restore this version. So everything will go back to the old version, to the previous version. Okay. okay. So, okay, let's see if I did actually share it with myself. Okay, I've shared it with myself. Okay, I have another email shared here. So let's say I noticed uh, one of our friends here asked a question, can we limit time of access to Google document? Okay, to do that, this is what you can do. So 
when you have actually shared with other people, if you want to limit a time, so there is a set expiration date or time here and next to the name. Okay, for example, I would like to set it uh, like some limitation, some time limitation to Liz, okay? I would actually set the date here. Okay, today is six. Okay, I would not want Liz to be able to access to my document after tomorrow. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna hit on seven, okay? Sorry, you can actually set a date from today, seven days, okay? You can actually set it like within seven days, for example, from the date that you have set, okay? And I'll just set save. So after the date, after seven days, this group, group member will not be able to access to this piece of document. All right, so let's say I would like to set a different time for another group member here. I can actually set it as 30 days. Okay, I'm happy with 30 days. I'll just click on it and hit save. So right now I have two different expiry date for both of them. So it's gonna be expired in seven days for Liz and it's gonna be expired on um, the 6th of May, okay, for another group member. All right, so let me repeat the step. So this is what you can do. When you have actually shared with other people, you can actually hit on the share button again. And you just have to click on the name here and you set the date that you want the document to expire for them here. Okay. And hit done. And of course, like previously, we actually, uh, earlier we talked about uh, doing research within your Google Docs. Okay, this is what you can do. When you head to your bottom right of a screen, you get to see a little explore button. Okay, you get to see a little explore button. When you hit on the explore button, it's gonna open up a search bar over here. Okay, well, this is what I can do. Ways to help. Businesses with digital marketing. So you you get to choose the option whether you want to search it uh, directly in your drive or you want to search the web or you want to search for images. Okay, so this is what you can see when you hit on the web tab. So you get to see all the Google search result over here which you can actually click on it and you it's going to open up the web page. Okay. Only the owner of the document only the owner of the document have the control of the settings. Um, yes, okay. Uh, you're the owner, then you will be, uh, you will have all the full control of your settings, okay? So what if we have many students, such as 50 students, do we have to set expiry date one by one? Um, for now, yes, okay, because for this expiry date, normally, uh, it's for it's more targeted for like individual uh, settings okay so in a version history there is an option name the current version could you please explain it sure okay when you go into version history okay you get to see name current version so which means okay you want to name this version into a name so I can actually show you more by clicking on the version history here. So name current version means, what name do you want to set for this version? Let's say, okay, Wayne updated. So I wanna make sure everybody knows this is my version. My Like I, I was the last person who actually added the idea here. So I can actually name this version as Wayne 
okay dash updated so people could actually see okay there's the version the name of the version so but it doesn't affect okay it doesn't affect google docs to show you who was the last person who edited it so as you can see here the last person who actually added in the idea was actually Lise. but even though i've actually changed the name but it still wouldn't change who uh, was the last person who actually did it okay what if it is a group discussion before writing an essay so can you show an example um for Juliana, your question, uh, could you possibly like explain more? Like, what do you mean by what if it's a group discussion before writing an essay? So, um, basically, everybody can actually discuss over here. Okay. Oops. So they could just add in. Um, I would call it as like the raw idea that they already have. And then um, you can still see all the version and they can just do all the changes but here within the document. Uh, okay. And earlier yeah, we talked yeah. about explore feature on the right bottom. Okay. Here you get to search ways to help digital marketing. Sorry, ways to help businesses. Example. Okay, I'm going to search for this topic. And once you click on the link here, you're going to be linked to the web page. Okay, that is showing you all the information. So let's assuming that you would like to add this thing, you would like to cite this as a full page because you have actually taken some ideas from this page. So you can just click on this button. All right, and you get to see the references over here. Okay, under a footage, and there will be a references here next to before, okay, before or next to your, the notes. So let's say I've actually typed something here. Oh, it's gonna be marked as your reference, and you can actually find the references list here, over here. Okay, so that's the explore. And of course, you can actually straight away pull in some images from the explore feature here as well. So as you, as you can see, without leaving your Google Docs, without having um, all your group member going everywhere on the internet, okay, everybody can just discuss under here. So let's see, okay, if they would like to discuss uh, via some via the chat okay um they what they can do is like they can just highlight this part let's say they have some commands on it they can highlight this part and hit on add command button okay and i can tag somebody so, for example, I can tag leads, okay, and I can even assign to leads, like this is this work, okay, I think this should be removed. So, I can just hit assign, and this will be able to actually receive a message, a an email saying that, hey, um, Wayne has, has actually commented on your work, and you're assigned to this. So, this can actually come in and do some changes and or even reply. And once she's done, she can actually hit on mark as done to hide the conversation. Okay. Can I request to join in if I'm not the I admin? Mean, yes, you can actually send in a request. So let's say if you today, one of the group member actually send you this link to share with you. And when you hit on the link, you are not giving, you are not given the access. You can actually hit on request access button and the I admin mean, or the owner of this uh, document will be able to give you the access. Okay. All right. So, any question on the explore part on the right hand side of the document? 
and a command. Let's say if I ask a student to write group essay uh, with a title, okay, can I use Google Keep to do this? Um, I wouldn't recommend um, I wouldn't recommend you to uh, get your students to use Google Keep as a platform for them to write an essay because it's more towards for um, writing now some notes. So for writing essay, I would actually more recommend you to use document because uh, here you first of all here you get to uh, it serves the purpose for writing essay okay as a document and second you get to track who actually contributed the ideas into the essay if let's say if it's a uh, group assignment and third they get to do their research they get to uh, like include all the references within the explore feature on the right hand side of the document so it's convenient for them it's convenient for you okay so the next thing we're going to look at is basically um, setting up uh, like a Google Hangouts Meet link for them to actually do discussion, OK? So by doing that, they can actually head to their calendar for students. OK, by doing the calendar, so what we can do is to, in the search bar, they can type in calendar.google.com or under the Google Apps button, they can just go into the calendar app. OK, they get to actually um, access to the calendar here. So some of you here might not be seeing this sort of view when you go into your calendar. So because normally this is the view that being shown to you. Sorry. Okay, normally this is the view that you get to see. It's like a week, a weekly view. Okay, this is where you get to switch the view to month on the top right. All right, when you hit on the month, you get to see the overview of all the assignments, sorry, overview of all your appointments within that particular month. So here, okay, let's say I'm gonna set uh, a group discussion with my group members for tomorrow, okay, Tuesday. I'm gonna set a call here. So I'm gonna hit on the date and set a title group discussion call. And of course, I have to add a time. Okay, I'm going to set it at two in the afternoon. And of course, I have to add some guests, I want to invite the group member into the call. Okay, once I've actually invited some of my group member, I can actually add. So the next thing will be adding location. Okay, and the conference call uh, or the um, online call link, okay? In this case, because right now we are not allowed to go out, okay? That's the purpose why we need to set up the Hangouts call. So we are not going to add any location. So, and if you do not see a link here, for example, if you do not see any link for conferencing here, you can click on add conferencing, okay? You will see join Hangouts meet and there will be the link for you. All right, and of course you can add description into it. So to tell your group members, so what do you want to discuss? For example, uh, hi guys. Let's have a call. Okay, let's have a call on a assignment and here's the list of things to prepare. Okay, and you can basically set the list of things so that, okay, this invitation, the call invitation actually serves a purposes. So uh, basically people will, um, receive this invitation with the information that they need to know, they need to actually prepare well uh, before 
they actually attend this call. So once you hit save, you'll be asked, so do you want to invite your calendar guests? So of course, we will send an invitation. Okay, I'll just hit send. And if they are using like um, email address that is a different domain, for example, I'm inviting this guy that is using Gmail, personal Gmail. So you'll be asked, you want to invite excellent guests? Of course, okay, we can add them. So there you go. Okay, we get to see 2 p.m. We have group discussion for tomorrow. Okay, can anyone join with the link only without adding the email? Um, to answer a question, no. Okay, if you if you did not actually add in the email to invite the particular person into this call, um, there would there would be actually uh, us okay to actually get the assess from the from that person from the owner okay in order for them to allow them to assess to the call. All right, so when you hit on. So let's look at how do you join into the call. So let's assuming that today is the day that we want to discuss things with a group member, okay? And when you go into a calendar, when you hit on this appointment, you get to see join Hangouts Meet, okay? Because you are being um, invited. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna hit on join Hangouts Meet, okay? Just like every one of you, you did earlier okay when you hit on this you get to see yourself on um, the left hand side and then you get to see some a few buttons on the right hand side and i'm going to explain a little bit more to you now okay on how to use google hangouts so basically on the left hand side you get to see uh, two buttons one is microphone and another one is camera so if you want to turn it off you just have to click on it and it will be turned to red color okay when it's being turned off so at the bottom right here you get to see there's a little settings button and here you get to see there's a turn on turn on captions which it allows you to actually use the auto generated captions while you are talking or while anyone is talking within a call okay in english of course and you get to see the settings. So here's the interesting part. So I'm pretty sure like during this MCO period, some of you here, you actually experience some bandwidth problem for your home internet or for your, for your data, okay? Um, and when you're doing a conference call, you want to try to limit, you, try, you want to try, try to actually minimize the usage of your internet bandwidth because the internet connection is not good, okay? So what you can do is you go to the video button here, video tab, okay? First of all, you can actually set the resolution to a lower resolution so that um, when you send out your video is not going to be in HD, is not going to take up uh, a lot of your bandwidth. That's the first thing. And of course, if you have this an internet connection, you can select high definition so that everybody can see you clearly. Okay. And for your receive resolution, the same thing you can do, you can limit the bandwidth that you want to use for the resolution for that you receive from the other people, let's say you have five group members, okay, you you will be seeing like five different video from the webcam, okay? Do you want to actually limit it? Do you, let's say if they send if they send a resolution as HD, but your internet connection is not good, you might want to actually lower it, okay? Or you want to choose not to actually see any of the video. You can actually select audio only so you can hear them but you don't see them to limit the usage of your bandwidth and let's say if you have you prefer to use like an external camera or external webcam rather than the built-in webcam that you have in your laptop you can actually click camera of course before that you have to plug in your external camera and you select the external camera that you have okay and in order to make sure you know which microphone and which, which speakers that you're using during the call to avoid the echo, okay, you can actually go to audio and check, and check your setting, okay? Um, like right now, I have actually connected my 
device, my laptop, to a Bluetooth microphone, okay? And I get to see it here, but normally I prefer to use a built-in internal microphone because it's clearer for me. So I will select built-in uh, speaker because I'm having uh, a Bluetooth headset So uh, and it's connected. So I will just select this one that I prefer and I can hit on test. So to actually test it before the core before I actually start the call. So when I hit on it, I can actually hear like a peeping sound, okay, to make sure that my speaker is actually working. So, and I hit done, I can hit join now to join a call, okay? So you'll be seeing like there is, you'll be wondering, there is a present button um, on the right hand side here. So what is it for? So when you hit on the present button, it's more like you want to straight away present your screen to the people, okay? That's when you hit the present button, okay? If you want to just join in the call first before presenting your screen, you can just join in first so that everybody can actually hear you and see you. And then when you are ready, you can actually hit on you can actually hit on the present screen. So how you can do that. So once you have actually joined in the call, on the bottom right, you can see the present now button. So when you click on it, you get to select whether you want to present a single window or present your entire screen. So sometimes some people might prefer not to actually present the entire screen because people can see everything else on the screen. So they prefer to um, present a single window, which um, where, the presentation slide is, okay? So let me show you. So let's say if I want to present just a single window, I get to select the window that I want to present, okay? If I present my entire screen, basically everything will be presented to everybody within the call, all right? And the next thing, okay, which is very important, um, I think it could be useful for you guys, especially during this period, while you're conducting a lot of online learning sessions, you would like to, I'm pretty sure you would like to record your lecture. You would like to record it for future references. You would like to record it to actually keep it as a record for uh, people who could not attend your call. So you can actually serve it as part of a re revision for them to actually look at, okay? What you can do is to record this entire session before you start the call. Just like today, for this um, webinar, we're gonna, we're gonna actually record it and share it through our social media so that you guys can actually refer back if you need some more information after this call. So you can hit on the options button here and hit on record meeting. Okay, once you hit that in, everything will be saved automatically within your Google Drive. All right. Okay, let's see. I noticed there are some questions here. Is there a way to set virtual background for Google Meet? Um, at this moment, no. You will not be able to say you, you will not be able to save any set any virtual uh, background. Do we need to schedule? Do we need to schedule a meeting? Okay. So this question. Do we need to set a meeting or do we need to schedule a meeting or we can start a meeting anytime, okay, on the spot on Google Meet? So this question, it's pretty much depending on what type of email that you're using. So let's say if you're using a personal Gmail for students, so for example, students, let's say if, if they do not get, if they do not get like a, like a university email, so they would have to use their personal Gmail, for example, they would not be able to start um, a meeting like immediately. They will have to set like an appointment and set a call. So because by setting up a meeting immediately, basically, yes, you are able to do so, provided you have a so-called university email that is attached to Google, you can actually start a meeting by setting a name okay, and let the other people to join into your call using a code, all right? So can we host, can the host set the quality for all, or it's individual setting? It's for individual settings, okay? Everyone will be actually setting their own settings. 
But of course, let's say if the other person actually setting to receive their video call in HD, but you are actually setting yourself to send out your video as 360 uh, quality, uh, this person would not be able to get HD either, okay? Can we grant permission to others to control screen or add notes? Um, nope. So uh, you will not be able to let other people to control the screen, okay? And you would and you will not be able to control the screen of other people either. So for a smartphone user who want to use a meet, who want to join a meet session, is meet app a muzzle or hangout app will do? Okay, just hangout app will do. Okay, either one will do. So for example. Just to show it to you guys. Okay. Let me just stop sharing. All right. So right now I'm actually having, uh, I'm actually reading the question from you guys on my phone, as you can see on my screen. So I've actually joined into the call as a second person so that I can see a second screen that everybody can, uh, ask a question and I can actually see it here uh, at the same time I can actually concentrate it on my screen to show it to you guys on the things that we want to do okay so let's get back to the screen okay how do we get the code for Google Meet from Google Calendar Can we use this? Oh, we want student to do presentation on a assigned topic. Yes. Okay. Uh, Jelena. So uh, I get I get the reason why you're asking this. So basically, you want to use this when you want your student to do a presentation, like probably during uh, the MCO period. They will not be present. They will not be able to present to you like face to face. You want them to. Um, you want them to basically present it through the call, through the Hangouts call here, while you're having a lecture session with your student, you want to have some interaction, that's a very good thought, that's a very good idea. So uh, just like I mentioned earlier, so after your student join into the class, they can actually uh, choose to present, they can actually click on the present screen and they can present the Google Slides that they have already created, or even let's say they are using a presentation slide platform from other platforms, so such as like PowerPoint, they can even present it to you and to everyone else in the class. So just like how I actually present to you guys, okay, and you guys will be able to interact with me through the chat here on the right hand side, okay? And for Ho, okay, Ho Yen Li. So how do we get a code for Google Meet from Google Calendar? All right, so uh, to get a code, so you have to set, okay, to get a code from Google Calendar, you have to set an appointment first, okay, like a conference call appointment. So by clicking on the date that you wish to actually set a call, and then you just have to insert the title, set the time, all right, add in the guest. And here, click on add conferencing. Okay, and you'll be able to see the link over here. And then you hit save. So once it's being set, you just have to go to the appointment that you have set here. And this will be the link. So there is a copy button. So let's say you would like to share this link with other people you can actually click on copy and you can share it through your WhatsApp or share it through email or any platform you like. So that will be the link over here, okay? Under this Google Join Hangouts Meet button, under there you get to see the link over here. So you don't have to highlight this, you just have to click on the copy button over here. Okay? So is there any more question?
so basically for today, I think um, we have actually focused on um, like a few very useful tools for you to increase the collaboration in between the students. So uh, at the beginning, we talk about Google Keep for um, writing some notes and um, and then we talk about transforming Google Keep into your Google Docs for, in order for them to contribute more idea for group assignment. And then we talk about scheduling like a hangout call for distant, for distant learning or for distant discussion. So these are the tools that are really useful, okay, that you can actually use during, during this MCO period. And which is also why we are actually hosting this webinars on this week. Um, in order for for us to actually be able to help you guys um, to understand to understand more to learn more um, about uh, online learning on how you can actually utilize all the digital tools that is that is available out there um, for you to use okay and just for information on this week on this week uh, we do have um, another two more webinars that we are hosting. So for those who have already registered, uh, I'm, we are looking forward to see you again. For those who have not registered, you can actually feel free uh, to contact uh, Liz or contact our team so that we can actually uh, help you guys to get a link for you. Okay, and for for tomorrow, we're going to talk about safe time communicating in a new way. So basically, um, it's going to be focusing a lot on uh, Gmail, Google Tasks, Google Calendar, uh, something that is uh, going to involve uh, some, a tiny part of today's session and also Google class, Classroom. Okay. So I noticed there's one more question here. Same sharing and collaboration can be done through sheets and slides. Yes, that's correct, okay? That's correct. So the same sharing and collaboration method um, can be actually done through Google Sheets and Slides as well, okay? So in the meanwhile, no problem. Okay, in the meanwhile, uh, please feel free to give us some feedback to let us know what else that you'd like to know in the future, okay, so that we can actually create more topics for you guys to learn. And, and also, if you have any inquiries, please feel free to contact us and to visit our website at www.itrain.com.my or contact us at info, at info at itrain.com.my. Okay, so um, if there is no any other questions, uh, this will be the end of our session today. Thank you very much to everyone for joining in. Thank you for your time. I hope it's useful for you guys. I hope that you guys will be able to utilize all these tools during um, this uh, quarantine period that we have, okay, to actually keep your work going and do stay safe, okay? Do make sure to stay safe during this period of time. So, okay, uh, Dr. May is actually asking, can we have your lecture notes? Um, and yes, okay, everything will be recorded. Uh, everything in this session is actually being recorded. So we'll, it will be shared uh, to you guys uh, via our social media and also uh, will be sent to you guys with the link after this, okay? All right, so I will see you guys tomorrow um, at the same time from 2 to 3 p.m. to talk about uh, communication revolution, um, safe time communicating in new ways uh, with a few of the G Suite for Education tools. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you, bye-bye.